Hi everybody. Hi. Uh, dear Svetoslav, I have a question for you. Tell us about your guru, please. Okay, uh, actually my uh, guru's name uh, is Yogi Ramaya. He was born uh, 1923 in South India. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away 2006. And um, so I spent with him um, almost all 90s. Uh, um, and uh, his, uh, his main ashram was in the South Indian region. It's a Tamil Nadu state. Uh, and, um, well, now I published uh, quite a number of books about Kriya Yoga tradition and my guru Yogi Ramaya and described many, many uh, things, interesting stories uh, about his life. But, okay, let us speak um, briefly about mm -hmm. his life. Actually, it's a huge question, but uh, let, let me say like a few most important things about this unique uh, mystic um, Okay, uh, actually the very special thing about Yogi Ramayak was uh, that he was direct disciple of Mahavatar Babaji, so a mortal um, master from Himalayas, mm -hmm. about whom um, uh, we as the Westerners came to know from Yogananda's autobiography for the first time. And, uh, uh, well, um, when you know, when I was speaking about Mahavatar Babaji, it's a huge question, uh, is it a real historical person, a great Mahatma, or is it just symbolical somebody? Um, you know, for me, he is a quite uh, mm -hmm. physical, a quite, quite real personality, great master. And, um, you know, um, actually the Western world, Western culture, so we came to know about um, Babaji uh, from Yogananda's book, as I mentioned. And um, so Yogananda published it in, um, in 1946. And since that time, you know, all the esoteric traditions, um, they know about um, Babaji. Before that, uh, you know, it was a huge secret, only a small bunch of uh, highly advanced yogis in India. They just knew about the existence of Babaji, and now it's uh, quite difficult for us even to imagine that, you know, like um, even a hundred years uh, ago, mm, mm -hmm. uh, virtually nobody knew about him. And um, anyway, um, uh, Babaji is a physically immortal uh, and he lives, it's a huge question for how long, and now we have a lot of speculation about uh, this and we have certain books uh, mm -hmm. uh, about him and some uh, authors, um, they have like a kind of suggestion that he was born some 203. Um, in South India, but uh, you know, a lot of misunderstandings uh, happen about um, Babaji because actually we have quite a lot of uh, immortal gurus and mystics who are Babaji. Actually, the Babaji is not named, this is the, you know, this is the point, it's just you know, the Holy Father. So it means uh, sometimes pe people mix uh, information about different Babajis. Mm -hmm. And now we're speaking about this great Mahavatar Babaji, about whom Yogananda wrote and who was um, guru of my guru. And um, that Babaji, Mahavatar Babaji, he lives in Himalayas in the region of Badrinath and Kedarnath, you know, for millenniums and millenniums. And he is the master of many great teachers, including Jesus the Christ and the Buddha and Adi Shankar, etc. Okay, it um, so happened that actually in the very young age, my guru, Ramaya, um, okay, he was born actually in a very rich family. His grandfather was uh, one of the most richest, you know, person mm -hmm. in South Indian region. And um, when my guru, Ramaya, he was like young student, he was very rich, and um, but at the same time, he was a very interesting guy. Uh, since very um, young age and he was not interested in business too much but he was interested in different scientific um, um, things uh, like he he became a student he he planned to learn about you know ancient Indian literature mm -hmm. uh, medical science different different things and by the way it was a problem for him because his father for example he wanted you no know, like his son to, to continue family business but uh, young uh, Ramayak he was interested in uh, you know in education more 
Um, then he got married and unfortunately when he was around 20 years old he, he became badly ill and actually he was really really ill for around um, eight years um, and um, you know it's a, a great miracle happened when he was um, actually 28 years mm -hmm, old mm -hmm. Um, uh, so and um, you know the connection between Yogi Rama and Yogananda is very interesting and mysterious. Physically, they didn't know each other. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. but uh, when Yogananda in the United States of America he passed away, it was uh, 1952. Just a few days after Yogananda passed away. Um, at that time, um, my guru Ramaya, he was very young, he was living at that time in uh, South India, in Madras city, now we call this uh, city Chennai, and he was really totally ill, he was staying in his home, just uh, under doctor's care, that's all. And then, then one mystic, uh, the name of this mystic was Mauna Swami, he came to the house, mm -hmm. And he told to the relatives that, okay, you have a son who is the badly ill, and I have a prediction that he will be okay, he will get a healing just quite soon. Mm -hmm. And this kind of prediction from Mauna Swan was huge, everyone in the house was happy. And then this Mauna Swan, he left house. And, um, but the question was, okay, nice, nice news that, uh, uh, like, you know, a young person, young man will be okay, but when is the question, mm -hmm. and how he will get this healing? And so it so happened, after a few weeks, um, young Ramayah, um, he um, actually under some depression, under some even physical pain because of his illness, he decided to commit suicide, he decided to kill himself, so it's happened. And um, so, um, you know, many years later when uh, I asked uh, him, okay, how you decided to, to, to kill yourself, so he gave me the story. And uh, uh, at that time his room was like on the second floor, mm -hmm. and he somehow managed to come down, mm -hmm. to, and it was just strange because he was so badly ill that it was difficult to imagine how he could manage, you know, to go downstairs, like, you know. And he decided to kill himself uh, with the help of unbelievable means. I mean, he decided to hold his breath mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. die. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay, again, many years later, I asked him, okay, how, how it's possible to kill, how it's possible to commit suicide with such a strange, you know, uh, technology, I mean, to mm -hmm, hold your breath, mm -hmm. not possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, later on, Yogi Ramaya, he told me, I, I don't know, I just got this idea somehow in my mind, so I decided to, to, to kill myself, because, you know, after, just you can imagine, after eight years, uh, painful, all this uh, in his um, because he was ill and it was painful. Um, he was tired, exhausted, yeah, like that. So he mm -hmm. he decided to do that. And when he held his breath, just ready to kill himself, just suddenly some voice he heard some voice from nowhere, and voice told to the young man, "Do not kill yourself. Give your life to me." And it was kind of shock for young Ramaya because just a voice from nowhere and he started to breathe again. Then he looked around, okay, nobody is there. And then he understood that it's some maybe kind of spirit, strange being. Yeah. yeah. And then he asked, okay, who are you? Uh, can you show the body? <laughs> yeah, yeah, who are you actually? Can you appear in front of me? And then uh, it happened just so. Uh, flash of light and Mahadar Babaji appeared before him, just in front of him and that was the first meeting of Ramaya mm -hmm. and his mortal guru. And it was of course a huge miracle and um, uh, actually Babaji gave him some blessings, some spiritual instructions and of course he healed him immediately and that was the first meeting. And um, 
uh, then Babaji disappeared the same mysterious way like in, a f in another flash of light and uh, so it was a perfect healing for Ramaya body and it was perfect huge transformation for his spirit and so since that time he became direct disciple of Babaji and um, so later on he met his immortal guru quite a number of times um, in South Indian uh, house uh, and later on Babaji invited him to visit Himalayas and so actually Yogi Ramaya um, in the second half of 50s mm -hmm. and 60s he really spent um, quite a few years in the region of Badrinath and Kedarnath in the upper mm -hmm. Himalayas in the cave ashram of Babaji and he learned actually Kriya Yoga, meditation, Bija Mantra tradition, philosophy and uh, so later on in, um, in the end of 60s, 1968 it was so Babaji sent him to the United States with a special spiritual mission to teach people to teach a small circle of disciples and um, um, and you know Yogi Rama as I mentioned he, he left uh, this world 2006 uh, and he left uh, consciously in a meditation state and uh, you know um, his life was you know um, he, he didn't want to become famous you know now he's becoming more famous because some of his Indian American the disciples and me were writing books about him but when he was you know uh, with us uh, he, he, he didn't mean to become famous and actually he never published any books he, he never built a huge ashram he was just uh, communicating with a small group of disciples mostly in India and the United States and um, um, he often visited um, London mm -hmm. and also different cities in Australia and uh, I spent some years uh, with him in his South Indian ashram so this story I may tell you today about how it was uh, his first meeting with his mortal yeah, world that's very interesting thank you very much Sitasla thank you yeah. goodbye